The universe appears full of stars, galaxies, and light. But this impression is one of the greatest illusions created by distance. What you are about to discover is that emptiness is not a side effect of the universe. It is its defining feature. By the end of this episode, you will understand why nearly everything that exists is separated by distances so extreme that nothingness dominates reality. From Earth, the night sky looks crowded. Telescopes reveal countless stars, galaxies, and glowing clouds. Yet these objects occupy only a microscopic fraction of space. According to modern cosmology, less than 1% of the universe is made of ordinary matter. Atoms form stars, planets, and life but they are statistical noise in the cosmic scale. The remaining majority of the universe is dominated by dark matter and dark energy. Both shape cosmic evolution, yet neither forms visible structures like stars. Even within galaxies, emptiness rules. The average distance between stars is so large that if the sun were the size of a grain of sand, the nearest star would be kilometers away. Space between stars is not truly empty. It contains sparse atoms, radiation, and magnetic fields, but the density is so low that it defies everyday intuition. When we expand our view beyond stars to galaxies, the emptiness becomes overwhelming. Galaxies cluster along filaments, leaving enormous voids between them. These voids are not small. They can span hundreds of millions of light years containing almost nothing at all. Even light struggles to cross these regions. Photons travel for billions of years through darkness without encountering matter. This emptiness is not a failure of structure. It is a consequence of how the universe expanded after the Big Bang stretching matter apart faster than it could collapse. To understand how deep this emptiness truly goes, we must leave Earth behind and follow the most distant objects humanity has ever sent into space. Their journey reveals not only distance, but isolation, showing how quickly the familiar fades into nothingness. This is where our exploration of cosmic emptiness truly begins. The Voyager spacecraft were launched to explore planets, but they became humanity's first witnesses to the true emptiness of space. Voyager 1 and Voyager 2 were launched in 1977 using a rare planetary alignment that allowed gravity assists from multiple planets. At the time, their mission seemed ambitious, yet limited. Few expected these machines to still be transmitting data nearly half a century later. As Voyager moved beyond Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune, the familiar structure of the solar system began to disappear. Beyond the orbit of Neptune lies the heliopause, the boundary where the influence of the sun gives way to interstellar space. Crossing this boundary does not reveal a dramatic wall or visible edge. Instead, it reveals silence and emptiness. Voyager 1 crossed the heliopause in 2012, becoming the first human-made object to enter interstellar space. Interstellar space is not completely empty, but its density is unimaginably low. Only a few atoms occupy each cubic centimeter. Interstellar space is not completely empty, but its density is unimaginably low. Only a few atoms occupy each cubic centimeter. Voyager travels through this region at tens of thousands of kilometers per hour, yet distances remain overwhelming. Even at this speed, Voyager will take tens of thousands of years to reach the nearest star system. This fact alone reveals the dominance of emptiness. Stars are not neighbors. They are isolated islands separated by oceans of nothing. Communication from Voyager now takes more than 20 hours to reach Earth at the speed of light. Eventually, Voyager's power will fade. Its instruments will fall silent, and it will drift unnoticed through the galaxy. No map will track its path. No signal will mark its position. It will become another invisible particle in the vast void. Voyager's journey demonstrates that even our most advanced technology barely scratches the scale of interstellar emptiness. Between stars lie regions so empty that a single atom may travel kilometers before encountering another. This emptiness is not an absence of importance. It shapes how stars form, how galaxies evolve, and how energy moves. Voyager teaches us a simple truth. Space is not a backdrop filled with objects. Objects exist within an overwhelming sea of nothing. After leaving the solar system, the next logical destination appears simple, the nearest stars. From Earth, the night sky makes stars feel close, almost clustered together. In reality, even the closest star systems are separated by distances that defy human intuition. The nearest stellar system to the Sun is Alpha Centauri, located about 4.3 light years away. 
A light year is the distance light travels in one year, nearly 10 trillion kilometers. Four light years sound small on cosmic scales, but for spacecraft, it is an enormous gulf. At the speed of Voyager, it would take more than 70,000 years to reach Alpha Centauri. Even the fastest probes humanity has ever launched barely register against this scale. This is not a technological failure, but a consequence of empty space. Between the Sun and Alpha Centauri, there are no planets, no gas clouds, no landmarks. The density of matter in this region is so low that collisions are practically non-existent. Stars form clusters only briefly on astronomical timescales before drifting apart into emptiness. Alpha Centauri itself is a triple star system, yet even within it, distances remain vast. The closest planet, Proxima b, orbits Proxima Centauri, yet remains separated from us by trillions of kilometers. Radio signals sent today would arrive there more than four years later. This delay reveals a fundamental limit imposed by the universe, the speed of light. No known physics allows information or matter to travel faster. As a result, interstellar travel remains theoretical, not practical. The emptiness between stars acts as a natural barrier, isolating planetary systems. Civilizations, if they exist, would be trapped within their own stellar neighborhoods. This isolation is not accidental. It is a direct outcome of how the universe expanded. As space expanded, Matter was pulled apart faster than gravity could reconnect it. The result is a universe where stars are islands and emptiness is the ocean. Alpha Centauri reminds us that proximity in astronomy is still defined by emptiness. To go farther, we must now expand our view beyond stars to objects that wander alone. Not all planets orbit stars. Some drift alone through the galaxy, completely detached from any source of light. These objects are known as rogue planets, or free-floating planets. They are worlds without suns, moving silently through interstellar space. Astronomers once believed planets could only exist around stars. That assumption changed when surveys began detecting planetary mass objects with no stellar parent. Today, scientists estimate that rogue planets may be as common as stars in the Milky Way. There could be billions of them wandering through the dark. Most rogue planets are thought to form within planetary systems. Gravitational interactions can eject them during the chaotic early stages of system formation. When massive planets shift their orbits, smaller worlds can be thrown outward. Once ejected, a planet enters interstellar space permanently. Other rogue planets may form directly from collapsing gas clouds. These objects blur the line between planets and failed stars. Without a star, rogue planets receive almost no external heat. Surface temperatures quickly drop toward absolute zero. Any atmosphere would freeze and collapse onto the surface. Oceans would turn to solid ice, kilometers thick. Yet internal heat may persist. Radioactive decay and residual formation. Energy can warm planetary interiors. Some models suggest subsurface oceans could survive beneath thick ice layers. Even in total darkness, liquid water may exist. These worlds demonstrate that emptiness does not always mean inactivity. Processes continue even when light is absent. Detecting rogue planets is extremely difficult. They emit no light and reflect nothing without a nearby star. Astronomers rely on gravitational microlensing. When a rogue planet passes in front of a distant star, it briefly magnifies its light. These events are rare and unpredictable. Each detection represents a fleeting signal from a hidden world. Rogue planets spend most of their existence crossing enormous voids between stars, distances so vast that encounters are almost impossible. The chance of a rogue planet entering another planetary system is extremely low. The galaxy is simply too empty. These planets may drift for billions of years without interacting with anything. They are among the loneliest objects in the universe. Their existence reinforces a key theme of this episode. The dominant condition of the cosmos is isolation. Stars are islands, planets are castaways, and space between them is overwhelmingly empty. Rogue planets are not anomalies. They are a natural outcome of how planetary systems evolve in a sparse universe. They reveal that even worlds can be lost to the void, carried endlessly through darkness. From here, we move from lonely planets to objects that warp emptiness itself where space is not just empty, but distorted. 
black holes represent the most extreme consequence of emptiness collapsing under gravity. They form when massive stars exhaust their fuel and no force remains to resist gravitational collapse. At that moment, matter is compressed beyond known physical limits. Space itself is forced to curve inward. A black hole is not an object in space. It is a region where space and time are fundamentally altered. The boundary of a black hole is called the event horizon, crossing. It marks the point of no return. Beyond this boundary, information cannot escape. Not light, not matter, not even signals. From the outside, a black hole appears deceptively simple, invisible surrounded only by distorted space. Most of its influence is felt not through contact, but through gravity. A black hole can be detected by how it affects its surroundings. Stars orbit unseen companions, gas spirals inward, heating to extreme temperatures, accretion disks form glowing rings of plasma. They reveal the presence of an otherwise invisible object. Despite their reputation, black holes do not actively consume space. They only affect what comes too close. The space between stars remains overwhelmingly empty. Even near a black hole, distances are vast. Supermassive black holes reside at the centers of galaxies, including one at the heart of the Milky Way Sagittarius. A star contains millions of times the mass of the sun, yet occupies a region smaller than our solar system. This contrast highlights a key truth. Extreme mass can exist inside extreme emptiness. Galaxies themselves are mostly empty. Stars orbit their central black holes across enormous voids. Between these stars lie light years of near nothingness. Gravity governs motion across emptiness, not through matter. Black holes distort space-time, creating gravitational lenses. Light bends, revealing warped images of distant galaxies. These effects confirm predictions of general relativity. They show that emptiness is an active participant in cosmic structure. Near a black hole, time slows. Relative to distant observers, space and time lose their familiar meaning. Yet even black holes emphasize how empty the universe is. They are rare points in an ocean of darkness. Most of space is not collapsing, it is expanding. Black holes do not dominate the universe, dark energy does. While black holes curve space-time locally, cosmic expansion stretches space globally. This tension between collapse and expansion shapes large-scale structure. Emptiness grows even as matter clumps. Black holes are therefore not destroyers of emptiness. They are markers of its extremes. They show what happens when emptiness briefly loses and gravity wins. From here we step outward again, from collapsed space to the largest structures ever observed. On the largest observable scales, the universe is dominated not by galaxies, but by vast regions of almost complete emptiness. These regions are known as cosmic voids. They are the largest structures ever identified. Cosmic voids are enormous volumes of space, containing very few galaxies. Some contain almost none at all. Typical voids span tens of millions of light years. The largest can reach hundreds of millions of light years across. Within these regions, matter density drops to extreme lows. Only a handful of galaxies occupy volumes that should statistically contain thousands. Voids were not created by destruction. They formed naturally as matter flowed away toward denser regions. After the Big Bang, matter was distributed almost uniformly. Tiny fluctuations grew over time under gravity, Dense regions attracted more matter. Underdense regions lost matter and became emptier. As the universe expanded this process, intensified, voids grew larger and more empty. Galaxies traced the edges of these voids, forming filaments, walls, and clusters. This structure is known as the cosmic web, a network defined as much by emptiness as by matter. Inside voids, gravity is weak galaxies. They're evolved differently. They experience fewer interactions. Star formation proceeds more slowly. Some void galaxies appear unusually pristine. They preserve early cosmic conditions. Voids are not completely empty. Dark matter still exists within them. However, even dark matter density is lower than average. Emptiness dominates every component. Light crossing a void travels for millions of years, encountering almost nothing. Photons move uninterrupted. Gravity barely alters their paths. Voids influence cosmic expansion. They expand faster than denser regions. 
This effect slightly alters large-scale measurements, including galaxy redshifts and cosmic flow patterns. Some cosmological models explore whether voids affect observations of dark energy. So far, evidence supports dark energy as the dominant driver. The largest voids challenge human intuition. They contain more volume than all galaxies combined. Most of the observable universe is void matter occupies the minority of space. Even galaxy clusters are surrounded by immense emptiness, isolated by voids on all sides. This reveals a profound truth. Structure is the exception, not the rule. The universe is not built from objects. It is built from space. Galaxies float within emptiness, connected by fragile filaments. Voids are, therefore, not gaps. They are the main stage. Understanding voids helps explain cosmic evolution. They preserve information about initial conditions. They also reveal how expansion shapes everything, from galaxies to the largest scales, to truly grasp emptiness. We must now move beyond structures toward the limits of observation itself. Every telescope humanity has built ultimately encounters a limit, not because of technology, but because of time. The observable universe is defined by the distance light has had time to travel. Beyond this boundary, information has not yet reached us. James Webb, Space. Telescope was designed to push this boundary as far back as possible by observing the faint infrared light of the earliest galaxies. Webb does not see farther in distance alone. It sees farther in time. Many of the galaxies Webb observes formed only a few hundred million years after the Big Bang. Their light has traveled for more than 13 billion years. Between those galaxies and us lies almost complete emptiness, vast stretches of expanding space. As light travels through this expanding universe, its wavelength is stretched. This effect is known as redshift. Extreme redshift allows Webb to detect objects previously invisible, yet it also reveals how much empty space lies between everything. Even at the edge of observation, galaxies are not packed together. They appear isolated, separated by darkness. This confirms a consistent pattern. Emptiness dominates at every scale. Beyond the observable universe lies a region we cannot see, not because it is empty, but because light from there has not arrived. Physics does not currently allow us to observe beyond this horizon. It is a fundamental limit. Some cosmological models suggest the universe may be far larger than what we observe, possibly infinite. If so, then the observable universe is only a small bubble, surrounded by more space and more emptiness. Other models propose different structures beyond the horizon, but none are supported by direct evidence. What remains certain is this. The visible universe already contains more emptiness than matter. James Webb has not revealed a crowded cosmos. It has revealed isolation at unprecedented distances. Early galaxies appear massive yet separated formed quickly but still alone. This challenges some models of galaxy formation, but it reinforces the role of empty space. Expansion has always been the dominant force, stretching everything apart. As time progresses, emptiness will grow. Galaxies will drift farther from one another. Eventually, distant galaxies will disappear from view, carried beyond the observable horizon. Future civilizations may see a far emptier sky than we do, with fewer galaxies visible. The universe does not evolve toward complexity everywhere. It evolves toward isolation. This is not decay. It is the natural outcome of cosmic expansion. Stars burn out. Galaxies, separate, voids grow. The ultimate fate of the universe is not collapse, but cold, empty space. Yet within this emptiness, complexity briefly exists. Life, consciousness, observation. We exist during a rare moment when the universe is still visible. James Webb reminds us of this timing. It shows us the last moments we can ever observe. Beyond that lies silence, not because nothing exists, but because emptiness has won.